<laughs> that's a Moroccan leather valise. That's not some trail hands gunny sack. Hey, Jelly, is there no intelligence at all west of the Mississippi, or are you all doing this on purpose to me? Mr. Harper, can I tell you something? No, no, no. Please, please, take those away from those idiots and see if you can't convey them up to my quarters without stumbling all over yourself. All right, fellas, nice and gentle, like he says. No, 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 just a moment. My orders were directed solely at you. Well, I ain't the official suitcase toter. Around here, everybody chips in. Well, are you contradicting me? I happen to be a guest at this household. And I've never seen a noisier guest. What? I may decide to have you fired. Well, don't you worry none about me. But if you want anything else done around here, I suggest you ask for it nice and polite. Because some of the boys got real mean tempers. James! Murdoch! <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you, old friend. Listen, if I'm going to spend one minute in your house... Yes? I expect you to fire this servant. Serve what? <laughs> that's not a servant. That's Jelly. The best horse wrangler and all-round hand I've got. Plus a good friend. Come on, Jim. Oh? Oh. Scott, Johnny. Well, here he is, my old friend from Boston, Jim Harper. My son, Scott Lancer. Scott? And Johnny Lance. Yeah, Johnny? I see him. Well, come on in. I'll give you a glass of whiskey. We can get down to brass tacks. All right. <clears throat> Sit down, Jim. Thanks. Now, what's the story? Well, it's, um... It's my daughter, Melissa. She's, uh, getting married. Congratulations, I guess. She's marrying a gold miner. My daughter, Melissa, do you understand what I'm saying? No, not exactly. Oh, maybe you better start from the beginning. Well, she wanted to spend the summer with her Aunt Kate in San Francisco, studying music at some institute. Now, I should have known that this was going to lead to trouble, because anything that originates in the unconventional mind of my sister always leads to trouble. Especially with a girl like Melissa. What's Melissa like? Well, him. Yes, him. She's beautiful. And my daughter was meant to stand beside a Harvard lawyer. Not a whiskey-swilling uh, literate with dirty fingernails who doesn't know a table fork from a pickaxe. That describes a lot of good people I know. I'm quite sure of it. And I'm also sure that they would be unfit companions for my daughter. You were saying something about a gold miner. He kidnapped her. And right now, she's up in some lawless hole in Humboldt County, and this villain is going to force her to marry him. Well, it seems to me that's against the law. Like you said, there's not much law up there. She's a prisoner. She's helpless and lost. She's a, a frail and delicate creature. Well, Jamie, you've had a long journey. You're tired. Why don't you rest for a while? We can discuss it further at dinner. Oh, fine, fine. I need your help, Murdoch. You'll get it. Walt, would you show Mr. Harper to his room? Yes, sir. Yeah. I don't blame her for wanting to go to San Francisco. Or any place. If he means to chase her into mining country, he's got a job on his hands. Well, for her sake, I hope he never finds her. He won't have to. You're gonna do it for him. What? You heard me. You leave tomorrow morning. Oh, no, Murdoch, I gotta... We got, we got a cattle drive coming up next week. I can spare you. What for? To help out an old friend. I know he's hard to take, but he gave me help when I needed it. This ranch wouldn't even be here without him. As a matter of fact, your mother. You wouldn't be here without him. Look, this is crazy. I mean, how are we going to find that girl? That's mining country. It's another part of the world. He's got a good point. Murdoch, we're not going.
private room? Mister, in this town, a private room is less than four people to a bed. And, uh, how about the presidential suite? Gentlemen, top of the stairs, number three. Thank you. Yes, sir. Money will buy everything. It's not bad. Not bad. Well, now what? Well, I'm going to take a bath, and I'm going to sleep for a day or two, and then I'm going out and find me a nice Chinese restaurant. Have a little wonton soup. A leg roll. Oh, a little chicken with mushroom. Egg foo young. Ah, right? yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give me a couple of eggs. I'm going to go to that musical show tonight. Well, then we should just happen to run into Melissa Harper. Well, so much the better. Hey, something I can help you with? Come on. Hey, who are these guys? I'm Johnny, and uh, it's my brother Scott. And you're in our room. <laughs> you hear that, Brother Crocker? We're in their room. We're in their room. <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, in that case, why don't you uh, just pay us $3, huh? $3? What for? Look, I mean, if you want $3, you go down the bank and get it. <laughs> you, uh, you shouldn't have said that, boy. <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Do you know who we are? Nope. Well, we're the Cooper brothers. The Cooper brothers? Well, what do you know about that, huh? The Cooper boys are in town. Well, what do you know about that? Scott, the Cooper boys are in town. Hey, what is that? Is that some kind of a new variety of mule? What's, uh, what's going on? These guys here, Shut brother. up, Harmon. They're disgusting, my own brothers. One day before my wedding, and you still act like a pack of animals. Oh, Brother Bob, we're just having a little fun. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, I hope you'll accept my apologies. Sure. Name your drink. What a whiskey. Toast. To me and my, uh, my beautiful bride, Melissa. Woo! That's for picking on my, uh, my little brothers. <laughs> that was a low blow. Well, we found it amusing. Hey, Bobby. Let's paint him. Yeah. Yeah, the old paint job. Come on, boys, let's get him. Yeah. Come on, come on, grab him, boy. All right, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Get him up, man. <laughs> oh, I don't want you gentlemen. You should be too mad about this. Just uh, realize. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
step out of your class. <laughs> I did, and I also found a clerk who likes to talk. The wedding's set for tomorrow night. Half the town's gonna be there. And the girl? Now, uh, they're keeping her pretty well hid till the wedding. So, clerk says she's a real beauty. Of course, he's never seen her, but he has heard stories. Oh, uh, yes. Now, now the claim's about 15 miles from here. We can get started anytime. Anytime. Boy, you just wanna... Right in there and get the girl with Cooper and his buddies hanging around? Just like that, huh? Sure, why not? You know the trouble with you? What's the trouble with me? You don't read enough. You know what Emerson said? Our strength grows out of our weakness. Well, what'd you go buy all this stuff for? You can't have too much of a good thing. I'm uh, Johnny Lancel. This is my brother, Scott. Your father sent us to take you home. Well, uh, my father's in Boston. You don't look like any Boston gentleman to me. Your father left Boston two weeks ago. He's at our ranch in Morro Coil, south of here. What does he look like? Oh, well, your father, he, uh, he's something else. He's about my size, rugged looking in a big city sort of way, mean-tempered. He talks a lot. And he thinks anyone who eats beef with a salad fork ought to be deprived of his citizenship. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, that's father, all right. Well, how do you plan to do it? Well, as quietly as possible. If not, we're willing to make a little commotion. But that's up to your boyfriend. He don't like us too much. Well, listen, he's expecting his laundry in a few minutes, and if I'm missing, he'll have his men out all over the countryside after us. But tonight, the boys are throwing a big stag party in town. So come and get me then. I'll be in the, the big tent, the one with the decorations. All right. Okay. I figure if you straighten out that pacing, you'd be in Humboldt County by now. Oh, they've got to bring her back, Murdoch. They've just got to bring her back. It's humanly possible they will. You've got to believe that. I do, they'll, they'll do it, I know. My telegram will help, too. Telegram? Yeah, I sent her a wire just to tell her that your boys were on the way. I wanted her to know that they were different from those Pinkerton men I sent. You already sent Pinkerton men? Yeah, a stupid, worthless lot. Worthless quitters. Take a few blows and they run away with their tails between their legs. Just what are you telling me? How'd you know where to send her a telegram? I knew Murdoch. Now, there's nothing really bad about Melissa. She's just, uh, stubborn. I need more answers than that, Jim. Was she kidnapped or wasn't she? Of course she was kidnapped. Almost every sense of the word. A helpless young girl like that. What does she know about love? Love? The physical young animal comes and sweeps her off her feet. How do you expect a child like Melissa to contend with that? Well, I don't know about her, Jim. But if you've led my boys into a trap, you're going to have a lot to contend with.
Melissa. In here. It's so dark in here, fool. Well, did the kerosene lamp went out? Do you have a match? sure do have a way of not minding your own business. You know, brother, it just could be that we've been misinformed. Well, what do we do with them? I say, uh, let's beat them up, like we did them Pinkertons. Oh, no. No, brother. Beating's too good for a man who'd steal another man's woman. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think we ought to... Let's trample them with a herd of bulls. Now, what we got to do is teach them a real lesson. Bobby, can't we just let them go? I don't think they meant any harm. I just didn't want there to be any shooting over me. Honey, we got to make your pa realize he can't keep sending men to break us up. You know that's true, don't you? I guess so, but I, I just get so scared inside sometimes. I don't know what's right. We're right. Marshal, why don't you take our... Uh... Our gentlemen friends in the town and keep them locked up till after the wedding. And by that time, we'll have thought of something real good for them. Place. Now, will you let me out? I mean, I had no business being in here. If it wasn't for him and my father, we wouldn't even be in this mess. Isn't that right, Scott? Hey, Marshal, can't you do anything about the noise around here? I can't think. Then I can do some thinking about getting us out of here. That's what you ought to do. If you're so smart, why don't you use your head instead of your lip and get us out of here? You know, one of these days, it's going to be my pleasure taking you apart, Scott. You know the trouble with you? What is worry it? Worry too much. You worry all the time. You're worse than an old maid. Is that right, huh? <laughs> Let's lead the horses out. It's quiet. What difference it make? We're heading south. We'll be out of here before they can catch us. Oh, no, no. We gotta go back after the girl. Oh, well, you ain't learned nothing yet. Look, Murdoch said to come back with the girl, so we come back with the girl. She don't want to come back. I mean, he saw her. She's no more of a prisoner than we are. She's young. She doesn't know what the man's really like. After tonight, it's too late. That's her business. Not until she's 21, it's not. Now, you coming with me, or aren't you? No. Well, then ride back to the ranch and tell Murdoch I'll be delayed. She was almost as pretty as you, I mean. Pretty legs. Nice arms, nice and soft. You could, you could just feel them around you. Was she your girl? No. no. Bobby always got the best ones. 
Never hardly anything left for anybody after he got through. What are you talking about? Vivian, Bobby's old girlfriend. She's dead. Didn't he tell you? Tell her what? Oh, nothing, Brother Bob. I, uh, I just dropped by here to pay my respects to my future sister-in-law. <laughs> Melissa? Melissa? Why didn't you tell me? I was afraid. Afraid of what? You turn away from me? Well, who was she? She was going to be my wife. Well, what happened? She was a, a school teacher. The only one there was. We grew up together in the hill country, in Arkansas. Came here. It was a, an epidemic, typhoid. She had to take care of the children who got sick. She got it herself. How long ago was it? Four years ago. Did you um, love her very much? We were uh, just going to be married. She died the day before the wedding. Oh, Bobby. She was the only decent woman I'd ever known. Until I met you. I guess I don't deserve that kind. I love you. I was afraid to tell you. If, uh, if you say you don't want me now, I'll understand. Oh, Bobby. You don't ever have to be afraid of me. Not ever. Hey, Bobby, some fool. A uh, fool over on, on the Wetburn's claim. Uh, says he could beat you in a hog wallering contest. Come on, let's let's go prove him wrong. Ain't that a fair interruption? Let's go. Be right back. All right, can I see him a minute? Sure. Hey, Bobby, you're not sore at me, are you? No, I ain't sore. Listen, Harmon. Uh, Stay away from Melissa. Well, I didn't mean any harm. You told her about Vivian. Well, I didn't tell her everything. You were going to. No, I wasn't. Don't lie to me, Harmon. You go near Melissa again and I'll kill you. Just like I killed her. All right, Bobby. All right. <laughs> What's going on? They are wrestling a pig. Don't be so sarcastic. Well, uh, forgive me. Actually, they're out there in tie and tails rehearsing Mendelssohn's wedding march. You know, I hope we're doing the right thing. Well, Emerson says... Emerson's back east minding his own business. Here, too.
up here, Bobby. So keep the party going. I'll be back with my bride. Crocker Harmon, let's go. Come on, Johnny, I'm pushed. This place looks fine. It's your party. Place to bed down. Yeah, that's not bad. Something bothering you? No. I'll have a look around outside. You and your brother fighting? He's got his ways. You got mine, Melissa. Well, how are they different? This whole deal about you. We just don't see it the same, that's all. How do you see it? I think a person's got a right to lead his own life. Do what he wants. Well, so how come you're keeping me a prisoner? You're not being kept a prisoner. Your father did my father a favor a long time ago. So we're repaying it by bringing you back, that's all. You, uh, you don't like me very much, do you? Well, now, what do you think? After that trap you let us into? Yes, I know you think I behaved very badly. You think I should have told you from the very beginning that I was not going to go with you. I thought it was kind of funny leading you on like that, but I was wrong and stupid, and I'm very sorry about it. Well, what can I say? Well... I'd uh, like you to say that you're not angry with me anymore. I'm not angry with you anymore. <laughs> you know, I never was. But I sure don't trust you. Well, I never asked you to have anything to do with me. You know, if, if I had been using my head, I would have told Bobby to shoot you the first time you came around. Oh, now, there is a different tune. Which one's right? What do you care? I didn't mean what I said. I didn't want Bobby to hurt you. No matter what you do... Well, I can't help how I feel. How do you feel? Father should have painted a different picture of you. Yes, well, little girls do grow up, you know. It's not gonna work. All I want is to be with Bobby. Why 
couldn't my father just let me be happy? Maybe when you get back to the ranch, you can talk to him. You know, tell him how you feel. <laughs> There's no chance of that. I, my father's idea of life is is marrying into the oldest family in Boston and not doing a thing that anybody can ever criticize. And what's your idea of life? Being free. I mean, being the woman I am, good or bad. Loving the man I love and raising my children to breathe the fresh air of the whole outdoors. I, I won't be buried alive in some corner of Boston. I, I want the world. That's a tall order. Yes, but is it any more than you have? No, I guess not. I guess not. Johnny, the, please, please let me have a horse and ride out of here. I can't. <laughs> This is Lancer. Oh, there's more. You get way up there on top of that hill. Well, it's as far as the eye can see. There must be a lot of places to be alone. I'd like to show them to you. No. I don't want to see any place I can't have. You know, Melissa, back at that barn, I was wondering, uh, why you called out to help me. Does it make a difference? It might. When I was a little girl, my father used to take me to the Boston Zoo. And I would look at all of the animals in those tiny cages. Now, they didn't hate their keeper or want to see them hurt. Out here, I guess that's kind of hard to understand. 
Well, well, you certainly took your time getting here. It was such a nice trip, it'd be a shame not to relax and enjoy it. <laughs> the last time I saw you, your father was bragging about your reading news stories in the Boston Herald. You must have been all of three. Is my father here? Sure, sure he is. He missed you. Now listen. Hello, Daddy. It's nice to see you. Listen. Come on. Come on. I'll show you your room. Uh, see you at dinner. Well, you did a good job. How did it go? Any problems? Well, aside from getting beaten up a couple of times and hit on the head and thrown in jail, shot at, no, no real problem. Good to hear it. What about you, son? Something bothering you? No. Like you said, we did a good job. Well, you don't seem very happy about it. I don't like kidnapping women. What are you talking about? You know that story that Harper told you? About her being a prisoner. It's a bunch of malarkey. She wanted to marry him. I know, but she's underage. Oh, fine, we'll just leave it at that. Well, what have you got to say? Nothing. He's got his notions, I got mine. Well, could I hear your notions, if you don't mind telling them? Well, I think Johnny's in love, but I think he's too stubborn to admit it. He's been wild and free most of his life. The girl caught him in the soft spot. Well, I just hope he can handle it. That's all. I'm going to get cleaned up. I missed you at dinner, Jenny. Well, I found something earlier in the kitchen. Oh? I understand that you and Melissa became quite close on uh, the way back. Just the horse you were riding? What are you trying to say? Well, I couldn't help noticing that you have only one sleeping bag. I was wondering. Are you kidding? Well, it may seem stuffy to you out here, but our society has very definite standards. Oh boy, oh boy, is that all you can think about? Your standards? Your daughter's safe, Harper. Well, I'm grateful, but uh, we do have rigid barriers. <laughs> rigid barriers, huh? They're more like cages? Saddle up a horse and get provisions ready. Uh, ready for what? I'll meet you at the North Barn in 10 minutes. Your father's going back to Boston tomorrow. I want to be with Bobby. Yeah, that's what I figured. Why don't you go change your clothes? I got a horse waiting for you. Johnny! did you do it, Johnny? After all we went through to get her here. She never wanted to be here. That's not for you to decide. She has a right to be with her man. Her man is a great A candidate for the hangman. Johnny, how can... Enough, Scott. We're wasting time. I told you before, I owe somebody a debt, and I'm gonna make sure it's paid. Are you coming? Bobby. Ooh, 
Aren't you going to help me down? Aren't you glad to see me? Crocker says he had the jump on him. You warned him. I, I didn't know what I was doing. It was all happening so fast. Besides, Johnny was trying to help me. He never wanted to take me in the first place. That didn't stop him from shooting at us. Melissa, you're going to have to learn a lesson. Hey, now, wait a minute. Bobby ain't going to do nothing for you, except maybe what he uh, did for Vivian. Vivian? Yeah, Bobby had to teach her a lesson, too. He beat her so bad one time, she never did get up from it. Nobody makes a fool of me, Melissa. Not Vivian, not you. Bobby! Go back to Papa? Yes. Yes, I am. Thank you. I don't think I'll ever be leaving Boston again. <laughs> no, it's Murdoch, <laughs> I want to tell you that you have two very fine young men here. Well, thank you, Jim. And I want to uh, show you how much I appreciate it. It was our pleasure, Mr. Harper. Even getting thrown into jail? Didn't mind that so much. Gave me a chance to meet you. Well, uh, if you ever find your way up around Boston, you'll always be welcome with the Hoppers. Because Melissa's going to be very, very busy. I've got a full schedule arranged for her. You have? Mm-hmm. I arranged it with the dean. Well, you're going to be able to go back to school all through the summer and catch up on the things that you missed in elocution and uh, classic ballet. And then there's going to be poetry reading with uh, Mrs. Siddons. There's going to be needlepoint with Miss Carter. All those things that a uh, young lady, a proper young lady, should know upon preparing to assume her rightful place in a uh, truly civilized society. Civilized, yeah? Oh, well, no reflection on your very uh, picturesque life here, but it is lacking in social graces. Oh, I have a surprise for you. You have an invitation to the next debutante cotillion. And I've arranged for young Haraway to escort you. He's the son of one of the... Uh, Oldest families in Massachusetts. He's a pimply faced snob with half the brains of a mule. What, Dad? Uh, nothing, Daddy. You know, I'm going to make it up to my little girl for all the time she's lost. Uh, would you all excuse me, please? You know, actually, Murdoch, this whole experience hasn't been all bad for Melissa. Just been the uh, right amount of misfortune, you know, to teach her where her true happiness really lies. Be right back, Jim. Sure. Yeah. Well, listen, you don't have to do what he says. Johnny, don't worry about me. Melissa, if you could go any place, any place in the whole world, where would you choose? I'd go to San Francisco and my Aunt Kate. I'd be free without all of this misery. <laughs> it's too late for that now. Oh, there you are. What's going on? Jim, um, are you open to an offer? An offer? What's involved? Your daughter. My daughter? <laughs> Wait a minute. You're serious. 
What he means is that she doesn't want to go back with you. Unless, uh... Is that true? I love you, Papa. You've done everything for me. But I want to be free. To do what? To be who I am. You're my daughter. That's who you are. Isn't that enough? No, Papa. Jim, you've given her everything in the world, except, uh, well, there comes a time when you have to give your children the right to say no to you. Well, what would you do? Where would you go? To Aunt Kate in San Francisco, like I should have done all along. Just let me go for a while, and I'll come back when I want. You said you'd all make me an offer for my daughter, and if I agree, what do you offer in return? It's very simple, Jim. The love and the respect of your daughter. That is, if you've got the strength enough to let go. I don't need a middleman. If Melissa's gonna say no to me, she can say it to my face. No detours this time. No detours? That's good enough for me. Size. I can lend you a few things to get settled. Oh, thank you, Teresa. I'll need something warm in the way of a coat. They tell me San Francisco can be quite cool this time of year. Hey. You're sure in a big hurry all of a sudden. Well, there's a lot out there. I could be missing something. Well, you could be missing something right here. Johnny, you're not trying to hold me back, are you? No. No. 